Spanish Tomato, written by Ed Keller. Claire is the new girl who just moved into the White House next to Mr. Edwards. I don't know where she came from, but her dad's car has a license plate that is different from ours. I believe I heard someone say that her father was transferred here and received a big promotion with the move. I am sure that the move was hard on Claire, having to leave everything that she knew and, and go to some place new. That is probably why she does not come outside much. It reminds her of playing with her friends that she left behind. I guess I should tell you about Claire. She's a little girl who looks like she's about five years old. She has short brown hair with a few curls and some freckles and dimples. She is what some would call a girly girl. She plays with dolls, dressing them up, playing in their own little world. Other times, she would be helping mom in the kitchen cooking. Claire enjoys baking cookies and cakes. She likes adding the ingredients and mixing everything together. And then there is the taste test when they come out of the oven hot. Claire also likes to play dress up. She has a few fancy dresses that she calls her princess dresses because that is what she feels like when she puts them on. This pleases her dad, who calls her his little princess, even when she's not wearing a fancy dress. One afternoon, when Claire was exploring in her new backyard, she saw a tall chain link fence that went all the way around the yard next door. She also knew that there were rows of different sized and shaped plants growing in them. Claire keeps looking for the perfect spot for a picnic. Mom has said that if she could find the perfect spot, they would have one as a surprise for Dad. Claire likes picnics. It was fun to sit on the blanket and eat. When Dad got home, he noticed the table was not set and asked about dinner. Claire took his hand and led him to the back door. When Dad saw that a picnic was planned, he let loose with a loud yippee and ran out to the blanket and sat on it waiting for the food. This made Claire and Mom both laugh. As they were cleaning up after the picnic, they heard a loud barking coming from outside the fence. Claire looked and saw the largest dog she has ever seen. It was about the size of a small horse. Dad went over to see the dog. It jumped up and put its paws on the top of the fence and looked over the top. It was as tall as her dad. That scared Claire, and she ran into the house. The next day, Claire and her mom were at the grocery store shopping. Mom was looking at some vegetables to fix for dinner. Claire began asking questions about where vegetables came from. Mother explained that vegetables are plants. Well, Claire already knew what plants were. They are green things that grow in the ground, and animals eat them. Mom kept talking about what makes plants so special. They can make their own food. Now, this was really neat. Claire wanted to know more. For the rest of the day, she could not stop thinking about plants and how they can make their own energy without eating something like animals do. Then she had a weird thought. If plants can make their own food, could animals do it also? What do you think? That night, after dinner, Claire and Dad talked about plants and how they could make their own food. Dad explained that plants contain a special chemical called chlorophyll in their leaves. This is what makes the leaves green. But chlorophyll factories use raw materials, water, air, carbon dioxide, and sunlight to make simple sugar that plants use as food. Claire wanted to know if animals had special chemicals like chlorophyll. Dad told her that we do have many chemicals in our bodies, but none can do what chlorophyll can. He said that if we did contain chlorophyll in our body like leaves, that we would probably be green also. Claire thought for a minute. People would look very funny with green skin. That is too weird. Dad reminded Claire of Mr. Edwards' backyard with the fence around it. 
Claire remembers seeing rows of different shaped plants growing in a section of his yard. Dad told Claire that Mr. Edwards has a garden where he grows many different types of plants and vegetables for him to eat. Then Dad told Claire about tomatoes. Claire liked tomatoes, so she was interested in what he was saying. He told her how tomatoes start off as green little balls growing on a vine, and as they get larger, they slowly change color from green to red. Claire was not sure about tomatoes changing colors. What do you think about the color change of tomatoes as they grow? When Dad came home from work today, he had a present for his little princess. It was a tomato plant. Claire's tomato plant. He would help her plant it, but she would have to take care of it. Claire was excited and wanted to know all about tomato plants. Mom was excited also and said that tomorrow they would go to the public library and find out all about tomato plants. At the library, they learned that the tomato was first used as food in the South American Andes Mountains. They discovered that the plant itself is poisonous, but the fruit is not. It quickly spread to Mexico, where it became a common part of their normal diet. When the Spanish arrived in Mexico, they saw the tomato as a trade item and spread the seeds to the countries they sailed to. Mom was surprised to learn that the tomato is a fruit. It has seeds inside it and grows on a vine just like grapes. Most plants that are vines have weak stalks and will wrap around anything close enough for them to reach. This is why most people place a long wooden stake next to the plant. This keeps the fruit off the ground, reducing rot. Once the vine begins to grow, it can be supported with strips of cloth loosely tied to the stake, making sure there is always support for the most recent fruit. The fruit should be picked as soon as it ripens to reduce the weight on the vine. When Claire got back to the house, she ran out back to check on her tomato plant. She carefully looked it over, checking the leaves and stems for bugs, and to make sure the soil was not too dry, just a little moist. Everything was perfect. Over the next few weeks, Claire cared for her tomato plant, making sure it got just enough water not too much sun, and picked off any bugs she found on it. Then one day, during her morning plant check, she saw something strange. It was a small, round, green ball on the underside of the vine. She ran inside the house to get Mom and show her the small green ball growing on the plant. Mom looked at the plant, inspecting it, and then they both walked back into the house talking. What do you think that little green ball on the vine could be? By the time they had reached the dining room, it had been decided by both that this must be a brand new tomato like Dad had been talking about. Claire's excitement did not last long. She remembered something she had learned at the library. Tomato plants are poisonous, but the fruit is not. And many types of wild animals will eat tomatoes, even green ones, if given the chance. What kind of wild animals do you think would eat green tomatoes on the vine if given the chance? Animals like the rabbit, groundhog, squirrel, deer, chipmunk, mice, and many more would enjoy a tomato ripe or not to eat. Claire became upset because she does not want anything to happen to her tomato plant. When Dad got home, she showed him the little green tomato and asked him how they could protect it. Dad looked over at Mr. Edwards' yard and Claire's eyes followed tears and she said, A fence! We will build a fence around my tomato plant. He thought that was a good idea. Then he asked Claire, What kind of fence should we build? Claire did not have an answer. She went and asked Mom if she knew anything about fences, but she did not either. Can you guess what Claire and her mom did the next morning after breakfast? Yeah, they went back to the public library and Mom looked up fences. 
Claire was surprised at how many different types of fences there were. They decided that Dad would know more about fences, so they checked the book out and headed home. When Dad got home, they sat at the dining room table with a pencil and paper and began talking fences. They agreed the tomato needed a fence around it for protection from the animals. The fence also had to let Claire have access to the plant for watering and inspecting. After much talking and drawing, it appears that a fence like Mr. Edward has around his backyard would be the best. But Claire thinks there is a problem with this idea. Do you see any problem with using a chain-like fence? The next morning, Mom and Claire are off to the public library again. They want to return the book they checked out and look for another one on fences. While Mom was busy looking at books, Claire found herself in the children's corner and sat down at a table. In front of her was a book, Polly the Parrot and Trouble at the Pet Store. She opened the book and looked at the pictures. All the animals in the pet store were in cages. Claire studied the cages. They kept the animal in and also protected the animal from anything on the outside of the cage that could hurt it. That is the answer. Claire figured it out. Build a cage around a tomato plant. What's the difference between a fence and a cage? Claire remembered going to the hardware store with Dad to get some screens to replace the one in the back door. And in the store was a guy buying a heavy wire screen to build a cage for his son's hamster. She told Mom about her idea, and Mom thought it was very good. So good that they would stop by the hardware store on the way home and buy the necessary supplies to build Claire's cage. Dad had no sooner got out of the car when Claire appeared and took him by the hand and began pulling him to the back of the house. In her excitement, Claire was telling her dad she knew exactly what was needed to protect her tomato plant and that mom had already bought the supplies to build it. Mom came out the back door just as Claire and dad rounded the corner of the house and they all sat on the back steps looking at the pile of cage building material that mom and Claire had purchased earlier today. Dad sat quietly with his head in his hands, slowly shaking his head back and forth with a big smile on his face. Then all three of them began talking about how tall the cage should be, how big around to make the cage, how will Claire get into the cage to water and inspect. Can you think of anything else they should consider before they begin building? They talked for a while. Dad drew some pictures in the dirt, and soon a plan started to come together. Dad planned to begin building as soon as they finished dinner. While Mom finished fixing dinner, she asked Claire to help by setting the table. She knew that the knife, spoon, and fork don't all go together, but she can't remember which two go together and what side of the plate they belong. Claire decides she would just put some on each side of the plate. When Mom saw the way the table was set, she knew it was time for a lesson. Do you know on which side of the dinner plate to put the fork, knife, and spoon? Mom explained to Claire that all she had to do is remember forks in order from left to right. The letter F is for fork, goes on the left side. The letter O is for plate, goes in the center. The letter K is for knife, goes next to the plate on the right side. The letter S is for spoon, goes on the outside of the knife. You have to forget the letter R, but you get the idea of how it works. One more thing about setting the table. Most people are right-handed and will hold their drinks in their right hand, so the glass goes to the top right of the plate. All that's left is the bread dish, and the only spot left is the upper left of the plate. With these instructions, Claire set the table perfectly. Mom was very pleased and told Dad when he arrived. This made Claire feel real good. After dinner, Claire and Dad helped Mom clear the table before they went outside to begin building Claire's cage. Draw a picture showing where the knife, fork, and spoon belong beside the dinner plate. 
The first thing they did when they got outside was draw a circle around the tomato plant. Then Claire placed four wooden stakes evenly around the circle. Dad hammered the stakes into the ground. When that was done, Dad got the hardware cloth, that real heavy screen material, unrolled it, and measured out how much they would need to go around the plant. Claire was busy digging a little ditch around the tomato plant on the line Dad had drawn, so part of the fence would be underground. That should stop animals from crawling under the cage. Now all that was left to do was tack the hardware cloth to the stakes, following the ditch Claire had dug. Dad still had to attach the screen on the top to keep the birds out. When that was done and the ditch filled in, Claire ran into the house to get Mom to show her their cage around the tomato plant. Dad was busy cleaning up the leftover material and storing it. Claire felt much better now that she knew her tomato plant would not be eaten by some animal. Claire tended to her tomato plant every day and noticed that the little green ball was getting bigger. She decided it needed a name. So she called him Greeny. She also saw that there was more little green ball appearing on the plant. Claire was excited and ran into the house to tell mom about the new tomatoes that had begun to grow. Claire was happy because Greeny will now have neighbors. Over the next few weeks, Claire checked on Greeny every day and watched it grow and slowly change color. It was all green to start with, but as it became bigger, it turns an orange-green color. It continues to grow, and as it did, the color became more orange, and shortly after that, a reddish-orange in color. Today, the tomato is completely red. Claire told Dad that Greeny was completely red in color. Dad smiled and walked into the kitchen to talk to Mom. Claire heard only part of what was being said, but it was enough to upset her. She did not say a word as she quietly left the room and went upstairs to her bedroom. She closed the door, got her favorite stuffed animal, Pooh Bear, and laid down on the bed. She began talking to Pooh. You see, Dad wants to use Greeny in a salad for dinner tomorrow. Pooh looks up understandingly at Claire, who gave him a big hug. Pooh knows that Claire can never hurt or eat one of her friends. Claire's face is now buried in Pooh's big belly as a tear appears in her eye. What would you think Claire should do now to keep Greeny out of tomorrow's salad bowl? Now there was a knock at her door. Claire remained silent, protected by Pooh's big belly. There was another knock. It was Mom wanting to come into Claire's bedroom. Mom slowly opened the door and went over to Claire and sat on the bed next to her, gently touching her back. Mom knows what has upset Claire. Now she holds Claire and Pooh, rocking them slowly until Claire looks up at her. Mom just smiles and Claire knew that everything would be all right. When Mom and Claire came into the dining room, Dad could tell something was wrong. Dad put down the glass of water he was carrying and knelt next to Claire. Claire grabbed Mom's leg and buried her face into it. Mom began to tell Dad that Claire was upset about Greeny. She did not want to hurt what had become a friend to her. Dad nodded his head. He understood completely. Now Dad was upset because he had forgotten that they had all agreed that the tomato plant was Claire's and that she was in charge of it. He also knew how special Greeny was to her. He just was not thinking when he suggested to Mom about using Greeny in a salad. Both Mom and Claire could tell that he knew he had made a mistake and was sorry about it. When Dad looked up at Claire, she released her grip on Mom's leg and still holding on to Pooh gave Dad a welcoming hug. Dad woke up early on this beautiful Saturday morning with a cup of coffee in hand. He walked next door to Mr. Edwards' house and rang the doorbell. As soon as the doorbell rang, there was a loud, deep bark from behind the door. Mr. Edwards opened the door and told Max, the Great Dane, that it was okay. Max smelled Dad and then went into the other room and lay down. Dad talked to Mr. Edwards about the problem he had with Claire and Greeny, her tomato, and asked him if he had any ideas. He asked him what would happen if they left Greeny alone. 
Mr. Edwards says the tomato would slowly begin to rot on the vine and eventually fall to the ground. Are there any tomatoes like that in your garden, Dad asked. Mr. Edwards said, let's go look. They went out back to the garden, followed by Max. As they inspected the tomato plants, Max was walking around the yard by the fence, smelling the ground. He was checking to see if any animals had tried to get in the yard. That was his job. He wanted his scent to be present all along the fence so any animal who got to the fence would know that Max lived here. Back at the garden, Mr. Edwards had found one plant that was in pretty bad shape. The leaves were a yellowish color. The tomatoes were beginning to rot on the vine. Not a pretty sight. Dad asked if he could bring Claire over after lunch for a tour of his garden. And could he stop by this tomato plant so Claire would be sure to see it? Oh, could you please leave Max inside? He scares Claire. Dad thanked Mr. Edwards and went home. After lunch, Dad and Claire decided to go for a walk. They started down the street and saw Mr. Edwards cleaning his front porch. They stopped and talked a little, and then the three of them walked around the house and through the gate into his backyard and walked to the garden. Claire's eyes got real big. She had never seen so many plants being grown to be people's food. She knew what most of them were, but there were a few she had never seen before. Mr. Edwards was walking between the rows, telling what each type of plant was and how long it would take to grow to the point where it can be picked. Claire liked the corn plants. They were real tall. Mr. Edwards asked Dad if he knew what this plant was, pointing to a row with just leaves and stems showing. Dad shook his head no. Mr. Edwards laughed. You have to dig these up. They are potatoes. He took out of his pocket a trowel and began digging, and there were little potatoes. Claire didn't know that potatoes grew underground. This was very interesting. The next row had wire fence like Claire had used around her tomato plant. Only this was leaning halfway over and held up by long stakes. There were vines growing all over the wire and had little green finger-like growths hanging alongside the vine. Can you guess what type of vegetable this might be? It took Claire a little while, but she finally figured out that they were green beans. Green beans had a neat way of growing, but Claire still does not like them because they don't taste good. Mr. Edwards called them snap beans and picked one and broke it in half. It made a snap sound. And then he ate it. He gave Dad the other half and, and asked him and Claire to try it. Dad ate his, but Claire just made a face and looked at Dad, who ate the second piece, and asked if he could have some more. This surprised Claire, because Dad is not a big fan of green beans either. Claire bravely extended her hand toward Dad, who placed a small piece of green bean in it. Claire put the piece in her mouth and began chewing. It was not as bad as she thought it would be. It tastes so much better raw than it does cooked. Dad was very proud of his little princess. They walked through a few more rows and then came to the row of tomatoes. Claire knows all about tomatoes. When Mr. Edwards stopped in the middle of the row, Claire saw a tomato plant that looked awful. Its stem was twisted, leaves were yellow, the tomatoes had a black sunken spot on them, and there were a few on the ground rotting. Claire wanted to know what was wrong with this plant. Mr. Edwards explained that he had waited too long before he began picking the tomatoes. And he had more than he could use, so he left this plant alone. The rest of his tomato plants looked healthy, and they were still producing a few tomatoes. That ended the tour. Dad and Claire both thanked Mr. Edwards and then continued with their walk. They walked down the street for what seemed like miles before Dad stopped. Claire had been talking and watching the sidewalk and did not notice that they were standing in front of the ice cream parlor. When Claire looked up, her eyes got big and her mouth opened wide. 
She grabbed her dad's hand, pulling him toward the door. Claire led the way right up to the counter where they were looking at all those wonderful flavors of ice cream. They were having trouble choosing between two flavors. A voice from somewhere urged them just to get both. So they did. They found a table with two chairs by the window and sat down and began licking. Claire licked until her tongue got so cold she thought it might break off. She stuck her tongue out as far as it would go to warm up. Dad said that she looked like that crazy dog Max next door with her tongue hanging out like that. Claire squinted her eyes and began barking at him. They both started laughing, followed by more licking. They finished their ice cream and began their walk home and began talking about Greenie. Dad told Claire that he did understand how she felt and that it would be her decision what to do with the tomatoes on her plant. Claire felt much better now. The ice cream helped some also. They held hands the rest of the way home. When they reached the house, Mom was on the front porch reading a book in her favorite rocking chair. Claire ran to greet her and tell her about Mr. Edwards' garden and their walk to the ice cream parlor. When Claire told Mom about the ice cream parlor, she gave Dad a stern look. That meant Dad was in trouble. Claire kept on talking, and when Claire finally stopped, Mom said that was the right thing to do because the tomato plant was Claire's responsibility. The next day, Claire went outside to check on her tomato plant. To her surprise, there were two red tomatoes. The closer she looked, the more orange-red tomatoes she could see. She knew that something needed to be done or her tomato plant would look like the one Mr. Edwards showed her. What do you think Claire should do? She went inside and sat down to think. What does she know about tomatoes still on the vine? They can be picked and eaten. They can be left on the vine to rot. They can be cut off the vine to reduce the weight so the vine won't break. This was all she could come up with. Two of the choices are wasteful. It seemed that the only good choice was to pick the ripe tomatoes and eat them. After all, they are grown for food and somebody will eat them. This was a very hard choice for Claire to make because she thinks of Greenie as a friend. Claire then remembered what Dad had said and now she understood it. The tomato is raised to be food and we eat food. Greenie was just the first of many tomatoes her plant will produce before the first frost kills the plant. Claire had learned so much that summer working with her tomato plant. Can you remember some of the things Claire learned this summer? She is already talking to mom and dad about having a larger garden next year.